everyone. This is Kyle Randall Tanzik from Michigan Medieval. Um, I have about 14 years of HEMA experience, and that means buying a lot of books and reading a lot of HEMA texts and spending probably way too much money on them. Um, so before I go any further, my own personal biases are for my Victorian era sources, I work with British material. And so um, whenever I make reference to savers or anything, I'm specifically talking about uh, Victorian British stuff. Um, so uh, without further ado, let's talk about the books today. Um, we're going to be working with these five different HEMA texts that are all from Hutton. Um, these are, a lot of these are reprints of the originals, so a lot of the critiques I might have of them aren't necessarily targeted at the publishers. Maybe they're the publishers that Hutton worked with in like the late Victorian era. I don't know, but sometimes some of the issues that might be publisher issues rather than like Hutton himself issues, not necessarily, you know, not leveling them at, <laughs> at the publishers necessarily. Um, so today we're going to be going over Bayonet Fencing and Sword Practice, The Swordsman, Cold Steel, Old Sword Play, and Fixed Bayonets. Um, let's get started. Get this out of the way. Okay. First things first, um, look and clarity. Um, in this book, there are no illustrations whatsoever. Um, the text is small, but clear enough. Um, durability, not great. Uh, very flimsy. I could probably just crack it in half. Um, you know, I'm inclined to want to like crease it to make it stay open, which it won't do. Um, translation. All these books are already in English, which you can read as a modern English speaker. Um, so no need to talk about any translation here. Uh, practicality. Um, does it stay open? Nope. Um, uh, no table of contents. If you look in here, no table of contents whatsoever. Um, uh, this is absolutely bare bones, no illustrations. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Cost, $10 paperback, $20 hardcover. What do you get for it? 31 pages, no illustrations. Um, closing thoughts, uh, just a quick reference book for people who already maybe know the system. This is a terrible book for beginners. Um, <laughs> this is don't, if you're if you're just getting started in in Hema or if you're just getting started in Saber or Hutton or whatever, don't start with this little pamphlet book. It's it's terrible um, for a beginner. Um, compared to, with his other works, this one's maybe just a bit of a novelty um, because it is just kind of like you know like a field guide, just like a, a little uh, you know brief summary book. Okay, moving on. Next up. The Swordsman, um, look and clarity. So I like that it has an old timey book cover. That's pretty cool. Um, as I always say, I kind of wish we had some HEMA books that look more like this Skyrim book, you know, kind of like an ancient tome looking movie prop. But like these are obscure reference books. They're not necessarily like, you know, LARP prop or reenactment prop. So that's fine, I guess. Um, large text. Well, actually, you know what? That's pretty small text, isn't it? Um, Illustrations, very clear, pretty crisp looking illustrations. Lots of hands in it, pretty cool. Um, durability, standard paperback book, not great. You know, it's not super durable. Um, for a textbook that you might gonna, you're gonna use and carry around with you a lot, maybe not great durability. Um, also, I'm inclined to wanna crease it, like to have it stay open, and that just makes it wear faster. Um, Translation, again, readable as modern English, no problem. Um, practicality, does it stay open? No. Um, very detailed table of contents. If you find it there, very detailed table of contents, no problem. Uh, do the images line up with the text? Yes, they do, they're very good about this, where the images line up with the text that's, you know, has to deal with them very, very closely. That's good. Um, it's a very small scale book. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, you can carry it in your pocket, but can you read it from a distance? Nah, probably not. Uh, cost, $24 paperback. Um, what do you get? 132 pages of foil, saber, and bayonet. My overall closing thoughts on this are great book for beginners, really good one for beginners. 
Um, it's not overwhelming. It's brief and concise, and it gives you like just what you need to know. Okay, quickly moving on now. Cold steel. Look and clarity. This is a very modern kind of modern -y bookstore look. Um, images are some of them are sideways, maybe a little faded, but pretty much good. Um, uh, durability. Standard paperback book. You can tell I've been carrying this one for a long time. It's already getting pretty worn out. Like maybe like page falling out kind of worn out. Corners are blowing through. Um, I'm inclined to want to crease it to make it stay open. Um, so that'll make it last a lot less time. Um, practicality. Does it stay open? Almost. <laughs> but no. Um, table of contents. Yes. A very good one indeed. Yep. There it is. Ooh, that almost stays up. No, it doesn't. Um, illustrations don't always line up with the text. So you'll find like big stretches of the book. Let me find one. Where there's just like pages of illustrations and all the text pertaining to them is like back before or after it. So you're constantly trying to like flip back and forth between like, oh, here's the illustration. Here's the text. Here's the illustration. Here's that. It's annoying. Um... Some of the illustrations are sideways, which I find just like another thing that makes it just slightly less practical. Let me find one here. There's one. So like I'm reading it sideways. Just kind of annoying, but like it's fine. I mean, it's a big picture, so I mean, whatever. Uh, one thing that does make it more practical is it, tons of, it covers a ton of stuff. Um, in this book, you have um, a bunch of different weapons and things. So cost $11 paperback. Yeah, I like that. $11 price tag. Can't beat that. I think I bought mine at the, um, the uh, what do you call it? The Higgins Armory in Massachusetts, like many, many, many years ago. I think I bought mine there. I think I just, we can all guess how old I am now based on that. Um, but uh, what do you get for your money? 194 pages of saber, saber versus bayonet, bayonet versus the French sword, great stick, constable's truncheon, and short sword and dagger. Um, it's great. A lot of material. Closing thoughts. This is my personal favorite Hutton book. Um, it's the best value for your money. Bunch of pages, bunch of different weapons, uh, very concise material. It's not a terrible place to get started if you're a very beginner. Um, if you're familiar with the HEMA, with, with HEMA and how it works and Saber maybe already, this is a great book to pick up. But um, if you are brand new to HEMA or any kind of martial art in general, this is going to be an intimidating book. They're going to throw a lot of... Con of uh, content at you. A lot of concepts and things are going to be good. Might get overwhelmed. Okay, moving on. Old sword play. This is probably the weird one in the bunch, honestly. Um, look at clarity. Very modern looking, kind of trade paperback. Lots of cool illustrations. Some of them are a little blurry, but most of them are pretty good. You know, I'm happy with it. Um, some of them are sideways. The illustrations are sideways. Big text. Yeah, pretty huge text size. So, well, actually, about average. Okay. Um, durability. Standard paperback book. Um, you want to crease it when you bring it open, which is, again, not, never good. Um, I would say this book is maybe a little bit prone to ribbage because it's a little bit bigger and it's a paperback. Um... Practicality. Images do not line up with the text at all. <laughs> so here's a lot of images. Here's a lot of text. Like the images in the text are kind of like, well, you know, they, you gotta constantly be flipping back and forth. And here's the text, here's the image, the text, and you know, that's annoying. Um, so, uh, does it stay open? Almost. <laughs> not really. You really, nope, still not. Um, table of contents, uh, is good. Cool. Yep. No problem. Um, I would say this book is acceptable for what it is. Um, cost $10 paperback book. Not bad. Um, what do you get for your money? 93 pages and perhaps too many illustrations. Um, I think I would like it if there was a little more of a, you know, more, more text for illustrations. That is just has to do with what the sort of book this is, which is a little bit hard to explain. Maybe I'll make another video explaining the context of old swordplay. Um, but what I would say is that this book is a bit of a time capsule. So this is like um, 
kind of Hutton's commentary, interpretations, et cetera, et cetera, about even older manuscripts. So in the Victorian era, he was kind of doing Hema in the Victorian era. But, and so like, it's it, this book is like a novelty. Like you're not gonna get a complete system out of this book and have it be something you're really, you know, that's gonna withstand the ages. Um, this is a terrible book for beginners because it's gonna create tons of confusion for them. They're gonna be like, why is this Victorian man telling us about these like, <laughs> You know, these Bolognese, like, Renaissance people and, you know, like, Angelo and stuff. So I mean, maybe this is, this is really not a good book for a beginner. Um, if you are an experienced uh, Hema fighter, this book is kind of going to be a fun novelty for you. If you love Victorian-era stuff, um, and if you love, like, Victorian medievalism, this is a great book for you. This is the perfect book for somebody who's really into Victorian stuff. Um, because it's going, to sh it's going to shed some light on, like, Victorian medievalism. That's an interesting time capsule. I think that's cool. Moving on. Here's the last book. This is called Fixed Bayonets. Boom. Look and clarity. Um, the images are very faint. I don't even, I'm not sure why. But you can see it's like, it's very, the images are almost like faded. Um, but they're like quite, you know, pretty faint. Um, I think it's still legible, obviously, but just kind of faint. Um, uh, the cover is like a landscape. <laughs> I don't know why, I don't know what this has to do with Hema, or what it has to do with Alfred Hutton, but there's a picture of a landscape. Sure, why not? Mm. <laughs> um, this book is like maybe unnecessarily large. <laughs> um, I don't think there's a need for it to make this book this large if you're gonna make the pictures and all the text like small to fit the page size. So uh, not sure why the publisher chose to do that. Durability, um, super thin, paper thin cover, pages even feel thin, like almost like newsprint. I'd be very afraid of ripping this book because of the pages. It's so big that when I want to flip the page, I might like snag a little bit. Nah, that's not good. Um, practicality. Does it stay open? I thought this is a blank page. You know, it kind of does stay open. Nah, that's okay. You get too far, maybe it'll flip. Nah. Okay. Oh, and then it shuts on its own. Maybe the beginning. No. Near the beginning, not so much. Oh, we have to figure to leave it. Um, uh, table of contents is very, very thorough. The images line up with the text, do they? Sometimes. <laughs> Here we can see a stretch of Harry's and things and then a bunch of text. So sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It's okay for that. Um, what else? Uh, cost, $14 paperback, $25 hardcover. Not bad. Um, $14 for this book. Uh, for what it is, it's a solid purchase, I would say. Um, closing thought, if you want a really good source for British bayonet fencing, this is it. <laughs> this is like, if you are late Victorian, British magazine rifle fencing, this is a great book for you to start you right from the beginning. I think this is a, it's, a, it's like, a, like a nine out of 10 if you, are, if, you, if you know someone who's interested in this subject. Um, it's a good value for the money. And it's really good for beginners, but good luck finding a beginner who's specifically interested in late Victorian British magazine rifle bayonet fencing. Um, if you know that person, buy them this book. <laughs> You'll change their life. Um, <laughs> um, okay, here are my closing thoughts on all of these Hutton books in general. Let's bring out the rest of them. My closing thoughts on all of these books um, is that Cold Steel is my top recommendation. Um, the Swordsman is maybe a better source if you're just getting started. Um, important thing to note about all these books is that um, none of these books tell us much about who Hutton was, his accomplishments, or the context in which these books were written, um, or the people who they were intended to be read. Um, those kind of things you'll have to do on your own. Um, and so, like, it'd be, it's, it'd be nice if there was, if, if in any of these books about of Hutton's works, there was like a little bit of an intro explaining like who he was, why he did this, you know, why why is any of this happening? Who were these? Who are these supposed to be read by? Um, I think if someone who's just a beginner to Hutton or a beginner to Victorian Saber or anything, they might be just lost by that. So um, notable mentions: um, the Sword in the Centuries is a sword. It's a book by Hutton, but it's like a history book. It's not a Hema treatise, a sword fighting treatise. Um, but yeah, so it's worth mentioning that he also wrote that. It's one of his other famous works. Um, this video was very long. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, please uh, like, comment, uh, subscribe, follow us on Facebook. Uh, all the links for everything will be in the description below. Bye-bye.